Let's now talk about bagging and random forest. Bagging and random forests are just a combination of regression and classification trees with bootstrap. So let's first talk about bagging. In bagging, we do effectively the same what I did in the previous video when I looked at the tense order polynomial. Remember, I, 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 uh, I did bootstrapping. I took 100 bootstraps and I fitted the tense order polynomial to each of the bootstraps. Now here for backing I do the same, only that I fit a regression or classification tree. All I do, I bootstrap for my data b times and for each of them I will take, uh, I will fit a regression or classification tree and then the output of the model would be then the average over all the individual regression or classification tree. In the regression model, it would be quite simple. I will get continuous variables. So if I look at the given data point, the given, given region and predictor space, I would say, okay, the first regression tree gave 2.3, the second one gave 2.5. And so if I only had those two, the, the value of the full model would be the mean, which would be 2.4, for example. If I had 100 models, I would, for, for a given point, look which would each of the trees give me as an output and I will take the mean of this. Now for the classification ones, I could rather than the mean, take a majority vote. Say the first model said class one, the second model says said class zero, the third model says class one and so on. And so the majority says class one, that's why I say it's class one here. But all I do, I bootstrap the data B times, fit a tree on each of the uh, bootstraps and then combine them um, by averaging them or by taking majority vote for classification ones. This is why those models are sometimes also called ensemble models because I have an ensemble of trees basically. And this is a very nice technique and it works already quite well uh, in, in practice. So all I really do is I, I bootstrap the data and um, kind of repeat the, oh sorry, repeat the training procedure and I take the average for regression and the uh, majority voting for classification there. But one issue here is that uh, kind of it might happen that each time I do the split there might be one variable which is much better than all uh, the others there. So kind of if you think about mortality rate for given infection H might be a very important variable. So it could be that each tree is splitting on H the first split. And so all the trees, trees end up being quite similar because each tree decides, well, the first, the best split is H, the best split is H and so on. And, and the trees, uh, rather than being kind of different to each other, end up looking quite similar because they always do the first split on the same dominant variables there. And, and this isn't exactly what I would like to have because, you know, to bring the variance down, ideally all the models would be independent because then I will get it down like 1 over square root n. But if they are dependent because the data is very similar and they always tend up doing the same, then I can't get the variance down so nicely. And this is what random forest fixes for me. So we, random forest, I kind of deal with this issue where the individual predictors are highly correlated and instead, what I'm saying is that, well, each, each time I do a bootstrap and I fit a new model, rather than allowing my model to split in the, when constructing the tree in all of the predictors, I say, you're only allowed to use certain variables. For example, the first model is allowed to use H, the second model is not allowed to use H. So it has to find some other information which is useful. And like this, it kind of learns something orthogonal to the first one. And combining those more orthogonal models with each other helps me to bring the variance down. And this is the key idea. So here what I'm doing effectively is each time I do the bootstrap, I'm now also only taking a random fraction of the predictors and then only use those reduced number of predictors to construct the tree. And generally a good number to choose there is the square root of the number of predictors. So if I have p predictors, I would take square root p predictors. So I will take this number of uh, predictors. Imagine I had four predictors, then each time I now do a bootstrap, 
and I want to fit a tree, I will randomly choose two of those four predictors and only use, use those two. And obviously in, in practice it will be um, more variables, it would be more something like maybe originally I have 100 predictor variables and now I only use 10 in the uh, reduced case, but by, by using only 10, I'm making sure that I'm not always using the same, and that makes the trees to be kind of more different, and this helps me to bring the variance down. So this is a very simplistic addition to the original one, but it is a very powerful one, because this makes the boosting model suddenly much, much, uh, the, the random forest model, much, much better than the original begging model and is actually amongst these tree-based models one of the most competitive one and even for many applications I always try out random forwards they perform quite well in practice it's hard to do much better than them another model which performs similarly good is boosting which we'll talk about next but boosting and random forwards are about the most competitive ones amongst the tree-based models but even when compared to to deep neural networks or compared to support vector machines for classification those techniques we'll be talking about for the rest of the weeks, those models are quite competitive. So always try out random forest as well, even though it's just a very simple kind of modification of the original begging. And uh, here's just some general uh, remarks. So kind of, I made this remark already earlier. So we should not necessarily prune the tree. So we don't have to do like a cross validation to kind of reduce the trees because as I explained, when talking about the tense order polynomial, because doing more bootstrap brings the variance down, the best way is to take the individual model to have as small of a bias as it can have. So ideally I have a very complex model, like an unpruned tree with a lot of leaves, and then I take many of them to bring the variance down. So the basic idea is don't try to reduce the size of the trees for every individual tree, Take them as large as you can, possibly within reasons, obviously, of your computation, and then um, then you will effectively just perform more and more bootstraps, and it will bring the variance down. So each individual tree should be as big as possibly it can be, which means it has high variance but low bias, and then I will use the bootstraps to bring the variance down, but I couldn't bring the bias down. So if I had chosen them too small, then I couldn't bring the bias down later on. So I have to be, the individual model must have small bias, and then the variance I can bring down by bootstrapping them. And interestingly also, um, for example, the amount of bootstraps is not necessarily a kind of hyperparameter I have to worry about. In principle, the more I bootstrap, the better. Obviously it becomes slower, the models become bigger, but there's no harm in doing more. It's not like I'm overfitting there. So I can really do as, as many trees as I can with computational reasons, and I won't really get worse models there. This is also very good, so I don't have to worry about, well, which is the best number of, of bootstrap samples I'm going to take. I can just say, well, I make the trees as big as I possibly can, and I sample as many as I possibly can, and this will be the best I can do. So that makes it very user-friendly from a data scientist point of view. You don't have to like know which one is the best or think a lot, you just do as big as you can, and this usually works quite well. So th those are some of the advantages of uh, using bagging and random forest. In particular, random forest always performs a little bit better um, in practice. So most people just use random forest in practice, don't really use much begging, uh, but begging is nice also for kind of historical reasons for you to understand where the random forests come from. And now we go on and move to boosting, which is our next model.